Hello, and thank you for joining us on this remarkable trip down memory lane. After 40 years of telling incredible stories about people and places, our main guy, Mike Randall, has decided to hang up the mic and head off into retirement. But before he does, we want to celebrate Mike by sharing with you some of his most memorable stories through the years. So without further ado, let's sit back and enjoy watching what Mike does best. Welcome to Game Show Fever. Welcome, my friends, to the only game show that has no contestants. But it works out nice because I don't have to give away any glamorous prizes either. Our first question tonight is, can you name that tune? Come on, everybody knows this one. Here's a clue. This is Jeopardy. You know Jeopardy, the updated version of an old favorite that showcases Alex Trebek as host, the latest in computer technology, and some of the smartest darn contestants seen on any game show anywhere. This is the ultimate. You've been on Jeopardy, that's it. The idea of the show is this. Alex Trebek gives a question in the form of an answer, and the contestants have to answer in the form of a question. Makes sense, I think. Uh, who's Tom Sawyer? That's right. Actors in the roles for 200. I enjoy seeing people make money the old-fashioned way by earning it, demonstrating how bright they are. That individual usually walks away with about nine or $10,000 in cash. Not bad for a half an hour of work, but before the contestants find themselves here on stage four of KTLA-TV for a Jeopardy taping, they'll spend a couple of grueling hours in this room. I'm very nervous. My palms are all sweaty. I shouldn't be here. My blood pressure's probably sky high. A written test is the first step a prospective contestant must take. This 50-question mind bender makes the SATs and civil service exams look like a day at the beach. I'll take fruits and vegetables for $100. The less than half who pass the written test get to play the classroom version of Jeopardy. What is cherry? You know, if they're not be able to produce in the interview room, you know, how are they going to do it in front of you know, five cameras, a studio audience. You know, we don't want people passing out up there. Thousands of people a year audition for Jeopardy, but few are chosen. How few? Out of a hundred, how many? A couple people. When I was a little girl, I wanted to go on Jeopardy. My lifelong ambition was to go on Jeopardy. When it comes to game shows, there's no such thing as losers, only departing contestants. The answer is, he'll never make it on Jeopardy because he's still stuck on the written test. The question? Who is Mike Randall for Eyewitness News? This story begins with the discovery of a wallet. We were tearing out the ceiling section right up in here, and out drops the wallet. Paul Aswad and his son, Paul Jr., have been renovating this old building. The first thing I thought was there's no way this just popped out of nowhere, and we started thumbing through, through it, and it was amazing. Inside the wallet, a veritable time capsule. This is his insurance on a 1941 Chevrolet. Here's his insurance policy, which is a hoot. Here's the entire policy right here. It was packed with documents. His United States Naval Reserve card. Social Security card, receipts, personal photos, all belonging to Earl Kerbis and dating back 65 years. He lost it in 50, 51. 50, we think maybe 50, 51. Paul and Son did a little internet detective work and discovered, sadly, that Earl had passed away in 2014 at the age of 88. And we missed this guy by a year. We could have had more stories from him. We could have talked to him about what he did here, what he helped on this building. They set up a get-together for a few surviving family members, including Earl's granddaughters, Amanda and Courtney. Grandma was a hottie. <laughs> Look at the pose. Earl's youngest daughters, Margie and Maureen, arrived and quickly identified the pictures. Oh, my. That's mom, yep. That's mom, and I think that's her sister. And they brought some photos of their own of a very young Earl and his wife of 65 years, Rosie, and this one, showing the couple's 11 children. This is their oh. 50, uh, 50th wedding anniversary picture. This is the so By all accounts, this mini reunion brought back some happy memories, even a few laughs. <laughs> <laughs> the wallet contained no cash, but that was no mystery to Margie. When I knew him, he didn't yeah. carry money, but he was single back then, so he might have had money. <laughs> A personal object lost, then found, and then returned. Our oldest sister wants to scan the pictures and share it with sure. everybody. We think Earl Kerbis would have been pleased with the way it all turned out. Mike Randall, 7 Eyewitness News. <laughs> Drumsticks, probably a drummer's best friend. No 
one quite knows how long a drumstick will last. Sooner or later, it will end up on the dusty floor of some nightclub or concert hall, broken and forgotten. But right here in Seven Country, at J.D. Colado Manufacturing in Niagara Falls, millions of drumsticks begin life every year. Six years, Joe Colado has made drumstick manufacturing look as easy as banging a tom tom. And while he's drummed up more clients for his hickory noisemakers than most any other stick factory in the world, you may wonder how he snared the idea in the first place. Well, that was easy. I was a drummer and a cabinet maker. I did both at the same time. I finally realized there was more money in stick making than there was in cabinet making. What makes Colado drumsticks special? Well, for starters, Joe creates his from scratch. The hickory is cut, dried, and turned into dowels right on the spot. Much of the work is done on machines designed by Joe, and many of the workers are actually musicians themselves. Another specialty here is the regal tip, a nylon doodad invented by Joe to save wear and tear on drumsticks. But if you ask Joe Colado what makes them so special, he'll modestly reply, Those are made in Niagara Falls, New York. For the first time visit, it may appear that around this place they make more sawdust than drumsticks, but nothing goes to waste. The sawdust is bagged and sold. And speaking of visitors, from time to time, one of Joe's more famous customers, like Mickey Hart, drummer for the Grateful Dead, will drop in to chat. See this? It's a drumstick. Mm -hmm. Drummer's best friend. That's why I come here. Mm -hmm. It's very important. This is an extension of your arm. You have to strike the drum with something. These people make the best strikers. And right here in western New York. Would you please hold all my calls for me? Joe Colato, cabinet maker turned drumstick maker. Not so unusual when you realize he's still a drummer at heart. And you just can't beat that. This is Mike Randall for Channel 7 Eyewitness News. What better way to spend a rainy Friday than getting reacquainted with an old friend? You know, the Comet. Although she's been around Crystal Beach nearly 40 years, the old girl still has a few tricks up her sleeve. It's a noble experiment, we'll call it. It's, a, uh, it's taking a traditional and very revered uh, ride and, and just adding a new twist to it. The new twist is this. They've turned some of the cars around, and now you can try an old ride a new way, backwards. Some of the park employees acted as guinea pigs today to make sure all the bugs were out of the system. It's great. Great. Way better backwards. But before the public gets to go for a whirl, the park has hired Dr. Robert Brown and his computer to give the Comet some safety tests. The results of the test won't be known for a while, but Sam Aquilina, who's run the Comet for eight years, doesn't need any squiggly lines on graph paper to convince him that backwards is better. It's a big thrill. Something different. Like they say, try your like it. <laughs> we thought you folks might like to see the ride for yourself. Whoa! Of course, if you really want to try it for yourself, Crystal Beach opens May 25th. This new way of riding an old friend just may change your whole way of doing things. I think that um, it, it just adds another dimension to the ride, and it's just, uh, we'll call it Son of Comet. At Crystal Beach, this is Mike Randall for Eyewitness News Nightcast. Do you remember those scary TV shows and movies where the ventriloquist dummy goes berserk and turns into a person? Well, so do I. And these were the images running through my mind as I approached the home of Johnny Maine, a professional ventriloquist who lives right here in western New York. No, I didn't really see that. Are dummies something to be scared of? Well, I hope not, because I make a living with it. <laughs> 
But uh, I imagine there is some mystique about ventriloquist dummies, because they seem to take on a character all their own. And what characters they are. Johnny Maine's collection of little people is one of the largest around, and each one has their own distinct personality and voice, with more than a little help from Johnny. Dig it. You call that flying? What were you expecting, U.S. Air? Johnny, that's incredible. You know, that bird does just about everything except spit. Wrong. <laughs> hey, that's not very sanitary. That's why I got rid of it. Many of the figures Johnny has built himself, and just like Pinocchio's Geppetto, is sometimes surprised with the results. Sometimes I think ventriloquists can go out there in their T-shirt. No one would notice them that much, you know, mm -hmm. if the character's strong enough. Oh, I know, there was one thing I wanted to add. Did you just see that? No, I didn't see anything. No, I, I could have swore he moved. I must be working too hard. I, I was just imagining things. One of Johnny's favorite creations is gutters. Oh, gosh. My goodness, I'm loose as a goose, I'll tell you. <laughs> gutters, I understand you, you don't drink anymore. Well, I don't drink any less either, you know? <laughs> it's an art form, uh, learning how to create a character and bring him to life and, and uh, uh, having a voice that fits the character. This all goes into the artistry. Johnny Maine has shared his artistry with many happy audiences and in 1981 was voted ventriloquist of the year. And while I have to admit he's an exceptional entertainer, I felt funny talking to his dummies all day feverish. It was a strange sensation. Uh, you don't look too good, Donnie. Maybe you ought to go lay down for a little while. Hi. Come on in. Got something to show you. You're gonna love this because this is my best creation yet. Take a look at my eyewitness news character. <laughs> time really flies. Believe it or not, it's already Hootie Who Day again. Mm, the third annual one, in fact. You know, it's the kind of holiday that makes you proud to be part of the Northern Hemisphere. Being downtown, I thought I was up on almost everything, but I didn't realize it was Hootie Who Day. I thought everybody knew about Hootie Who Day, that it was started by a disc jockey in Pennsylvania, and that the idea is to chase away the winter blahs and do welcome spring. Hootie Who. <laughs> Hootie Who. Hootie Who. At high noon on Hootie Who Day, you're supposed to shake a blanket at the sun and yell, Hootie Who. It's that simple. Hootie Who! Some folks really get into it. But does Hootie Who Day really have an effect on the seasons? Well, according to the folks who started it, it does. Well, did we have spring last year and the year before? You're right, we did. It must be working. It's incredible. <laughs> Hootie Who. Hootie Who. Hootie Who. Hootie Who, Buffalo. Hootie Who. Maybe it's not as festive as Dingus Day, nor as well known as Groundhog Day. Hootie Who Day certainly does have the potential to catch on. Hootie Who! Although it may take some time, quite some time. Mike Randall, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. By all accounts, Margaret McCormick was a pretty amazing mother. She sewed, she knit, she crocheted, she baked. You name it. When Peg and her sister Barb get together and talk about their mom, you never know what's going to come out. Oh. Mother fell out the back door and never knew that she was pregnant with twins. Margaret, or Marge as she was known, passed away in 1995. The accomplishment she may be most remembered for is that she gave birth to 18 children, 11 boys and 7 girls. Peg is the oldest daughter. And I got to tell you about the bathroom. When you went in the bathroom, you didn't stay in there long because there was always somebody rapping at the door. Let me in, let me in. Charlie, Peg's husband, came from a smaller family. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I only have one sister. You have one sister? Yeah. yeah. Slacker. <laughs> you could say that Peg's mom wrote the book on having a large family, literally. It's called Cheaper by the Dozen and a Half. If she was still with us, she could add to that 72 grandchildren, 135 great-grandchildren, and 40 
great-great-grandchildren. Those are big family reunions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell us about it. What do you think we did for nine years there if we were? In the 1980s, Marge was featured on Eyewitness News. And when we get have our reunion and the grandchildren get there, the sons in particular, they'll come up and shake their finger at me and look around. They'll say, Grandma, you know what? You're responsible for all this. <laughs> Eighteen children. Unbelievable. She must I, be in the Guinness Book of World Records. I couldn't even keep track of three. <laughs> no, it's I, hard enough. Mm. At the McCormick House, there was always room for one more sometimes whenever the kids would uh all these kids would come over to our house my mother would say would a half a dozen of you just go to bed and peg's most memorable lesson from her mother she always said if you're going to do a job do it well or don't do it at all margaret mccormick a very special mom who left a lasting legacy Happy Day! mike randall seven eyewitness news the erie county fair has something for everyone for the foodie for the moments, for the races, for the dancers, for the animals, for the thrills, for the crashes, for the best 12 days of summer. Visit the Erie County Fair August 9th through 20th. Buy your tickets at ecfair.org. This summer is the perfect time to join the Jeep SUV community where you can overcome more obstacles, bring the sun along for every ride, and electrify every adventure by going even further. Make this the summer you go anywhere and do anything. Make this the summer of Jeep. During the summer of Jeep, well-qualified lessees can lease the 2024 Jeep Wrangler Willys 4xE for 369 a month. Visit Jeep.com for details. Wherever you go, wherever you stay, all you need is one key. Earn and use rewards across Expedia, Hotels.com, and Verbo. My active psoriatic arthritis can make me feel like I'm losing my rhythm. With Sky Rizzy to treat my skin and joints, I'm getting into my groove. Along with significantly clearer skin, Sky Rizzy helps me move with less joint pain, stiffness, swelling, and fatigue. And is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Sky Rizzy attaches to and reduces a source of excess inflammation that can lead to skin and joint symptoms. With Sky Rizzy, 90% clearer skin and less joint pain are possible. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Thanks to Sky Rizzi, there's nothing like clearer skin and better movement. And that means everything. Now's the time to ask your doctor about Sky Rizzi. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. The old place looks pretty much the same, sort of. It's the students that seem to have changed. The way they look. Being different is what's cool. The way they talk. Roy is like somebody who doesn't fit in at all. The way they think. Well, it's just the new generation. People are, um, men are becoming more independent. It's kind of hard to believe that 15 years have passed since Joy to the World was the number one song. Like a lot of kids, I couldn't wait to get out of high school. For that reason, this return visit to Kenmore West is a mixture of nervous anticipation, fond memories, and a stark realization that it's been 15 years since I was that teenager preoccupied with girls getting into college and growing facial hair. By the time I was actually able to grow sideburns, they were uh, out of style. But aside from that, I look exactly the same. <laughs> sort of, don't I? Jerry Trent and Annette Herr, faculty advisors to the class of 1971, seem to think that 15 years haven't changed what's cool in school. Gee, I really don't think that much has changed. I think kids are kids no matter when. I think they're dressing differently now. You don't have everyone looking exactly like everyone else. One place to find out what's happening in the teen world is in the heart of every high school, the cafeteria. 
seems to be the same social hotspot it always was. Things haven't changed a bit. Wait a minute. You're kidding me. There's a Coke machine in the cafeteria? What else are these kids eating? Oh, and potato chips. Donuts and Twinkies and Susie Q's and stuff. What's cool in the cafeteria these days is junk food. They tell us that the good food will kill us, and they tell us that the bad food will kill us, so who cares? Let's have good, the junk food tastes better. Tomorrow night, we'll take a look at the latest in fads and fashion to find out what's really cool in school. Compared to 1971, almost anything would be an improvement. This is Mike Randall for Eyewitness News. Cowboy and love in cowboy ways. Where are you going, stranger? Pursuing the life of my high ride eagle. I remember when I was a kid coming to Fantasy Island, I'd see the sheriff and I'd say, I want to be Black Bart. He looks like he has more fun. You boys think I'm going to let you get away with that. What we do here is uh, put on a Western show. The bad guys come into town and beat up on some innocent, and the marshal comes out and rescues them. Sends the bad guys out of town. Bad guys come back in and shoot it out with the marshal. I want you out of town, and I want you out for good. Understand? All right, Marshal. We'll go now. We're coming back. You're going to pay for that, Marshal. It's good and bad. Bad guys and good guys. It's playing, you know, cowboys. And uh, it really is a dream come true. Like I said before, uh, you give uh, four 25-year-old men pistols and watch them turn into five-year-olds right away. Go on, bang, bang, shoot them up. Bang! I do know. I just worry. This has got to be planned out just the way a dance has to be. Everybody has to be in the exact same place at the exact same time every time you go through it, and everybody has to know exactly what else everybody else is doing or else someone's going to get hurt. Right now, I told you once to get out of town, Brandon, I meant it. Now get it. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, being a cowboy is everyone's dream when you're a kid. And uh, being paid to be a cowboy is a dream come true. My heroes have always been cowboys. Hey, boy, where'd you get the fancy shirt? Yeah, where'd you get them bound jewel jeans? Yeah. I don't think we like your kind around this town. And one step and I found themselves and they're slow and Extreme Discount Mattress makes luxury affordable. 100% pure Talalay latex mattresses are being sold locally for $9,900. The extreme luxury price is just $29.99. Where we sell mattresses for less, a lot less. My late father-in-law lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had AMD. I didn't know it then, but it can progress to GA, an advanced form of the disease. His struggle with vision loss from AMD made me want to help you see warning signs of GA. Like straight lines that seem wavy. Blurry or missing visual spots that make it hard to see faces. Like this one. Or trouble with low light that makes driving at night a real challenge. If you've been diagnosed with AMD and notice vision changes, don't wait. GA is irreversible. It's important to catch it early. Talk to your eye doctor about GA and learn more at gawontwait.com. At LL Flooring, we've seen it all. It's a rental. It's, it's a, a remodel. remodel. It's a really bad day. Can I do this? Can you do this? We help you find your right floor at the right price. Turning indecision into your best decision. LL Flooring. Every step covered. When we found Van Lightenment, we found courage. The courage to travel long distances as a family again. Oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. Gaslight's on. It 
was that bad. With a total range of 520 miles, you'll find peace of mind in America's only plug-in hybrid minivan. Well-qualified current owners or lessees of competitive vehicles can lease the 2023 Pacifica Hybrid for $4.99 a month. Hurry to your local Chrysler dealer today. At Extreme Discount Mattress, we're keeping our prices low. This luxury pillow top mattress. Compare elsewhere for $4.99. Your extreme deal price is just $1.99. Call or go to ExtremeMattress.com for more extreme deals. Well, we sell mattresses for less. A lot less. Clowns are a tradition as old as the circus itself. And it's the one job around here at the 120th edition of the Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus that yours truly might actually be able to pull off. And when I came to the circus, I wanted to see the clowns and I wanted to see the elephants poop. <laughs> Can I say that on TV? Jeff Schott agrees to make me look the part. He graduated from clown school four years ago and has been with the circus ever since. I'm still basically a shy person, but as soon as I put my clown costume on, my clown character comes out. There are 23 mirth makers with this year's circus, but for tonight's show, there will be 24. <laughs> Looks good. There are no scripts in the clown business, but gags and routines are treasured jewels that are passed on from clown to clown. Mike Weekly fills me in on my part. Classic, classic gag. It goes back to the beginning of the century, okay? It's such a great gag, Mike, because it's so stinking simple. Ten minutes before showtime, and the moment that this band of madcap men and women have been waiting for. A chance to check out the crowd. Hi! Now, are you in this show? I heard this is a terrific show. Are you in this show? What are you, the Zambini sisters? Later on, our sketch, the old wet paint on the park bench routine, goes off without a hitch. And no one suspects that this Buffalo TV reporter is not really a clown. Well, at least not a professional one. No, I haven't found a new career, but I have discovered firsthand what makes clowns, animal trainers, daredevils, and the acrobats work so hard night after night in the ring. The answer reveals itself as easy as the smile on a child's face. With the greatest show on earth, Mike Randall, Eyewitness News. And that's it for this very special edition of 7 News this week. Don't forget to join us throughout the week as we continue to celebrate our guy, Mike Randall, before he heads off into retirement. Until then... Have a great weekend.